Hey beauties, good afternoon to you beautiful people. So beauties, um, I was listening to this young girl, young Christian girl, give her testimony about uh, five years of fake friendship. She had to basically, I'm putting it, I'm terming it like that. So she said in uh, 2019, um, I think in 2019 in the United States, they had got the COVID. It was 2019 or early 2020. Well, I know we, it came to Jamaica in 2020, March. But anyway, not um, in 2019, I think when the pandemic was basically out and about in other countries. Um, and I think it had hit the US in 2019. And... Uh, Somehow she met up on someone. I don't know if it's online, she said, or somewhere. But they were good friends. I think it was online. I don't know if it's through Facebook or whatever had happened. Maybe she posted something, the person commented, and for some reason they, they hit it off. They became gr good friends. Like they spoke to each other, you know, online until they were able to meet each other in person. So they hit it off well, and maybe they liked how each other spoke. You know, you're, you're talking to somebody. They say, I like this individual. They seem okay. They seem cool. You know, you know, they seem cool and all of that. And, you know, I guess they exchange information as to where this one lives. One lived in one state and all of that. So, you know, over time, as the year started to go by, one year, two year, they became very close. So she introduced her husband to, to you know, her, the other, the other friend's husband. So the four of them, you know, became very close. You know, it was a kinship, you know, f familial you know, brother, sisters, brothers and sisters. But obviously she's closer to the, the wife. Um, and uh, the man probably, he would be closer to the husband, you know, because he still have to use wisdom. And they went on and went on and went on. In terms of their friendship, they would start to go out, hang out, call each other. Basically every day she share information with her friend. I mean, they were, I mean, two peas in a pod. One day in the fifth year of the friendship, the friend called her friend two called friend one so that we don't get confused and started to unleash not let me not use the word unleash started to confess that she hates her she is jealous of her she's resentful bitter she doesn't like her she was pretending for the last five years to be her friend it is as though her heart came through her mouth, the friend one. She was confused, totally discombobulated. Take that back because she's trying to, she even said she is going back on messages that they send each other to see what red flag did she miss. She says she cannot find a red flag. She's not missing it. I saw some comments where somebody saying that it's nothing, that it's not adding up. How all of a sudden the friend just decided to con, con, tell her all of this, confess. And she's saying to the people, there's nothing that I'm hiding. There is no need to make up a story. You don't understand the workings of the Holy Spirit. She's, I am a good friend to her. I've been a good friend, sincere friend. And when God sees this, that is like you're messing with God's children. When you mess with God's children, he doesn't play about his children. So the friend called to say, I was getting sick. My conscience was killing me. It was getting to me. I couldn't handle it. Because it was basically making me sick. I had to confess. She was almost, as I would say, as you would say, forced to. So the Holy Spirit convicted her so badly she couldn't bear it. When God, you see, when that conviction comes upon you, people, you don't understand. Whether you're a Christian or not, you can't, you have to move on it. It's like it's going to drive you all insane because it's on you. It doesn't move. It doesn't move. It's, you know, I don't want, I was going to liken it onto the, the big C sickness, but I, I don't want, but in other words, when somebody has that, they have no choice but to go to the doctor to get help. So when God's, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and convicts, you can't do anything. You have to just, you have to just, whatever it's say you have to do, you have to, when he has moments for that, says it's, you know, and he, uh, she confessed you know, told her that she was just jealous. She was pretentious. She said the only thing she remembers was when it was some Mother's Day. The friend two didn't have any children. I think she was pregnant. And her husband, friend two's husband, um, call, called uh, the friend one to say, congratulations, wishing you all the best. And she responded, even though she knew her friend didn't have any, she wanted to, her to feel good. So she was calling things that are not as though they are. You know, wishing all the best, you're a good mother, whatnot, whatnot, and so on. But before she had sent that message, she realized, realized that friend two 
only said, yeah, all of what my husband said. She said, hmm, that's strange. Why would you say that? You know, she said she remember her, but that was the only thing. She said she found that that was the red flag and she probably missed that, that, um, that particular red flag. But every other thing, there were no red flags. No red flags at all. She said she was going through, nothing seems off, maybe to her, you know. And uh, she said, uh, you know, she has forgiven her because a friend did ask. She said, of course I forgive you. She said she's generally not the type to hold anything in her heart towards anyone, especially if the fact that she's asking for forgiveness. But you know, the friendship is no more. But I'm sure she has to go through the motions of how did I miss this for the last five years? You know, thinking that I'm a child of God, you know, how, where was my discerning spirit? What happens? And I want to encourage anybody who has been a good friend to anyone. It doesn't mean that you don't have the gift of discernment. Sometimes, personally speaking, I could be wrong. God will allow something to fly through the cracks for you to to learn that look here you have people out there who are so slick it is like when the scripture says you know that sometimes he sorry that he has to cut um the time short in life because even the very elect can be fooled even the very elect can be fooled that's why sometimes some good people go home early you know because even the very elect the chosen ones that's what it is saying can be fooled you know and i think god had to allow that to happen for her to give a testimony so sometimes people said they must have, of course there would be red flags. I, I gave one where, where she said, yeah, man, everything the husband said. And for, the, for her, she was saying, why would you ride on the banks or the congratulations of your own husband? Why not give your own specific words? But she didn't look at it as per se negative. She probably said, okay, she probably just lays it to right. She was just lazy to right. The friend, sorry, sorry, beauties. The friend said she hated her hated her but she put on a show for five years she hid her feelings she hid her emotions she said there was no stare there was no look after look nothing at all she didn't see it none of those things where i said she caught her looking at her son where i sent her some nothing she said she even had to go back on uh, even a year or more behind and she saw nothing and people don't understand you have people who are good at pretending for a time for a time it was the holy spirit who realized that okay she's not picking up these subtle Maybe there are some subtle red flags. And the Holy Spirit, all right. This girl is too good. I'm not going to make her destroy her any further. I make her think she's running with a friend. Because they were supposed to meet up for some party or something of the sort. When I say party, some get-together thing. They were so shortly before they were to meet up. And God probably said, I'm going to bring up the shenanigans. He's going to just demolish that. So, you know, none of that obviously didn't take, any pla didn't take place. Because the Holy Spirit convicted friend too. Well, I really shouldn't even say friend too. Enemy. And I want to take my in closing in a sense. I, obviously, we know that, you know, we're going to say that, you know, true, no true person is our own. That's not true. Friend one was a true one. Friend one was a true one. And I know that feeling. I can tell you from experience. Friend one was a true friend. So there are true people around. It's just that it is unfortunate that people cannot recognize when they have a good friend they there are people out there really want a good friend and can't find that good friend and some people get the good friend and just crush it stifle it strangle it smother it and you wonder why sometimes i wonder what's wrong with people like you, you have a good friend and you demolish that and many of you your hearts are broken because you know what you have done I don't know how that friend is going to live with herself. And I can understand the heartbreak, the heartbroken state, sorry, that the friend one must go through because she has to go through. She's human. I said, my God, five years, all of my five years were wasted. But more so, the other one didn't realize she will never, perhaps, usually 90% chance, never get a good friend like that again. Never, perhaps good friend these are church people too church christian this is not a non-christian situation too so people just be careful be very careful my god it was hard listening to the the entire story though <sighs> guys follow me on tiktok subscribe to my youtube channel share this message please